Hello friends, so in this demo we are going to look uh, into what is Windows cluster and SQL always on so basically you know I am going to demo it uh, how to create a Windows cluster and then configure SQL always on uh, on with that uh, Windows cluster uh, this is going to be uh, you know a six part video uh, basically uh, so in first part you know we would start with creating nodes and then configuring static IPs uh, in part 2 we would configure the things around domain controller and active directory users and adding failover cluster feature in part 3 you know we would be working around DNS servers and then adding those VMs to a domain controller in part 4 we would be configuring windows cluster in part 5 uh, some prerequisites for SQL always on and, and then configuring SQL always on actually and then in part 6 uh, you know configuring the listener and then configuring the internal load balancer and then connecting you know the, your VMs into the load balancer this is uh, going to be a long journey <laughs> And I hope uh, you know uh, you will enjoy this and you will learn uh, on, on configuration of Windows cluster and SQL always on uh, in very simple manner uh, right and uh, uh, one thing is uh, there that you know you can you if you have a properly infrastructure uh, you know uh, that means that you know we are going to actually have three nodes here uh, two nodes would be used for uh, you know synchronizing the databases and one node would be used for the domain controller so now if you have a proper infrastructure uh, the steps would be the same and you can do on uh, you know on your on premises infrastructure uh, if if not uh, then you know you can try it out this on azure vms so so I'm, I'm going to demo it uh, through uh, creating the Azure VMs, right? Okay, if you are going through the Azure VMs, then very, very important prerequisite is that, you know, you should have a valid Azure subscription. Uh, just check how can you get, uh, you know, the free subscription, right? Uh, once you have this valid Azure subscription where you can create a resources, uh, then I think, uh, you know, it would be uh, helpful and uh, you can actually do a demo or a POC uh, on creating this, right? So let us start uh, this series. Uh, let me open my Azure portal. So this is my Azure portal, right? And uh, let me first show you. So very first thing we always need to do is that, you know, we need to create a, a, the resource group. Now this is a, a logical grouping of all the resources, right? So that, you know, whenever you want to do a cleanup, uh, you can do it very quickly. Just, uh, you know, uh, remove or delete that resource group and all your resources would get deleted. This is basically very helpful when you are doing such POCs. Okay. So I would say availability, uh, away. Uh, JIT avail one. This is uh, available, and we are we are going to work in region East US. Okay, uh, review and create. Once it is passed, it would actually create this. Right. Let us go to the resource group, and now we would start creating our resources. And as I told you, uh, you know, we are going to create three VMs: uh, two for synchronization and one for the domain controller. Okay. So I would show you demo on one VM and then you will have to create in the same manner with the same configuration you will have to create another two uh, VMs right. So to create a VMs uh, click on the create resources and you can find your uh, you know VMs here or uh, whatever VM you, you want or if you have already created a virtual machine uh, then you know it would get displayed here itself so what I am doing I already have created one so it is showing me I am creating on create uh, clicking on virtual machine and you can see the resource group is being uh, you know uh, selected for me uh, provide your machine name VM machine names I am providing SQL node 1 and this also we need to put in the same region okay availability option this is very important uh, configuration we need to do if you want to configure an internet uh, internal load balance then you will have to put this machines into availability set right if you forgot right now then it would be very difficult and you will not be able to do that you will have to redo everything that is you know creating a virtual machines again okay uh, let us give the availability name here av1 uh, this is available we are not going to change any configuration around this okay and then selecting your image for the virtual machine right uh, okay the virtual machine which i am going to create is uh, you know uh, uh, with the sql server right so sql server would be actually loaded into that 
uh, as I have already created, so it is showing me this, but you can click on see all images and actually you can search for your virtual machine. Uh, so what I'm saying, uh, uh, what I want to find is SQL Server 2017, for example, and then it will bring back all the you know images available. Now here we want we don't want to spend anything on the uh, SQL licensing. Uh, so basically for this demo purpose, uh, you know I would be using the developer edition, which doesn't cost anything, right? So on any of the images you can you know create on the select and it will show you all other images as well. So I know we got our first uh, image itself here. You can see here free SQL Server license, SQL Server 2017 developer on Windows Server, right? Uh, so we will have we don't have to you know we don't we don't want to spend on uh, SQL licensing. So we would be selecting this. Once we have selected, uh, it will ask for the size of the VM. Uh, there are different sizes of the VM. Uh, you can choose whatever you uh, you want, uh, right? Depending upon your uh, budgets. Uh, but as this is a demo, then I'm going for the lowest uh, or the you know very minimum configuration. So I would be selecting B2S, and you can see here. <laughs> Uh, uh, B2S is uh, providing me two uh, CPUs with 4 GB RAM, right? Uh, you can, uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, if you want, uh, you can scale up and scale down this uh, configuration at any point of time, right? For now, I am selecting this. Once I have selected, we need to, you know, uh, provide a credentials. This credentials would be uh, used for logging into your VM, right? So let me create the credentials. I have I have created the credentials and along with RDP port, we are going to also uh, use HTTP AT port, right? <laughs> uh no rest of rest of the configuration looks okay uh, click on the disk uh, for the disk we are going to choose standard ssds and you need to select this uh, so that you know whenever the vm is deleted this disk uh, attached to that uh, vm would also get deleted on the networking tab we are not going to do anything uh, basically uh, this is okay uh, on the management and advanced tab also we are not going to do anything on SQL server setting tabs, of course, we are going to enable the SQL authentication and you can see here uh, the credentials are, you know, uh, the same credentials are carried on, right? And for the storage, I think uh, we would be uh, using very minimum storage, uh, right? And uh, we would be putting all your log data and uh, uh, TempDB files on the same drive, okay? Right? Uh, rest of the configuration uh, should be okay. Uh, then press next tag and then review and create once you click on review and create uh, it will show you whatever configuration you have chosen and uh, now you can see here uh, it is showing us uh, you know the amount uh, we would be spending uh, here uh, it is around three three rupees uh, uh, per hour okay as this is uh, you know uh, the login is from India it is showing three rupees per hour right and below are some uh, the configuration which you have selected uh, just check to main configuration that uh, you have kept your machine into availability set or not and you are using the free sql server 2017 license okay once you do that uh, you can click on uh, create button right and it will start provisioning your uh, virtual machine along with uh, installing SQL server uh, so this way you will have to create three uh, virtual machines uh, node 1 node 2 and then a domain controller okay I'm not creating right now because I have already <coughs> created those machines let me show you uh, those uh, so let me go back uh, to my subscription and within resource group uh, I would like to show you JIT HA and now you can filter this with uh, virtual machines right and you can see here I have created three virtual machines SQL node 1, node 2 and DC 
right how to how to uh, connect virtual machines so click on the virtual machine and it will provide you all your uh, you know configurations like what is the public ip address uh, then what is the static ip address yes uh, private ip address so please uh, note down you know uh, once you create all the three machines please note down your all three private ip address and write down uh, somewhere because they we would be needing those right going forward and then rest of the configuration right and how to connect this uh, there is an option on uh, the top here called connect click it that and click on the rdp sorry rdp button and then download your rdp files it will actually download the RDP file, RDP file is nothing but a remote desktop uh, connection uh, is used to, you know, uh, connecting to your uh, VM, right? So when you click RDP and then when you click on this, uh, it will ask for a username and password in this way, right? So I want to change this here. Uh, I would say Jiten1973, this is the username and password which we have uh, supplied while uh, creation of a virtual machine. Okay, click OK. Uh, give me a second. It is giving me some error. So this way you will have to, you know, provide the credentials and once you provide a credential, uh, it will, you know, allow you to log in into the VMs. Uh, let me show you here. You can see here now it is trying to log into the virtual machine. And yes, I think we have been logged into virtual machine. So the virtual machine is getting, uh, you know, it is uh, doing its uh, initial configuration. <laughs> So now the next part, you know, until this is getting loaded, the next uh, step in our uh, virtual machine is that we want to configure, uh, you know, uh, the static IP, right? Now they should be uh, different from uh, uh, the which uh, you have written, like, you know, uh, you might have got uh, the private IP as 10.0.0.4 uh, or whatever it may be, but uh, we need to uh, give a different uh, static uh, IPs here. Okay, let, let this get completed and then I will show you how to, so now this is your server manager, uh, right? And then, uh, you know, on a server manager, uh, you click on the networking tab. Uh, just give me a second. Okay, on the local server, right? And on the networking tab. So basically, uh, you know, here, uh, I, this is, I, I, just give me a second. Okay, this is local server, yeah. And here, click on the Ethernet 2 here. Okay, so IP config setting we need to do from the Azure portal itself, right? So we would go to each machine here. So initially I'm going to SQL node 1, right? And on SQL node 1, click on the uh, networking here, right? Click on the networking and inside the networking, uh, there is a network interface, uh, right? Uh, click on the network interface. Yeah, it's, it's still loading. right here so this is SQL node, node 1 click on this network interface uh, it will it will take some time and then under that uh, go to the IP configurations and inside IP configurations uh, click on IP config 1 here you can see here and then click on static and instead of this uh, you know, 10.0.04, uh, just please change this uh, to 30, right? Any Anything you can give, not only 30, but it should not be in 4, 5 or 6, right? Uh, we would give it as a uh, 30. And once, once that is done, click on save. <laughs> okay. 
of course you can you can actually uh, you know uh, go with four five and six as well uh, but like while doing a demo you uh, know uh, i had i had been using this uh, and hence i am continuing with this right it will take some time uh, let me pause the video till then right so you can see now here uh, saved network in interface card so this way we need to you know do for all the nodes so networking i am now i am in sql node 2 i am clicking on network interface card i am keeping i am clicking on ip configurations right and on ip config 1 and remember your uh, uh, the static ip which you have created for sql node 1 it was 30 so i am uh, giving 31 for this and again i am saving this it should take some time here again now you can say this is done for node 2 also and let us do this for domain controller go to the again networking uh, dc and ip configurations and ip config click on ip config and then press on static and here i am giving this 17 now this is nothing that you know uh, only specific which i have given you you, you need to give those uh, you can give the only thing is they should not be uh, you know uh, there should not be any conflict so i am saving this uh, with this uh, you know our uh, the first part uh, that is uh, creating the vms and uh, uh, you know uh, configuring the static ip is completed uh, see you in the uh, next part uh, where we would be actually doing uh, configuration uh, for our domain controller okay uh, bye for now see you in the domain controller video